reader, I'm Cindy Burnett. Welcome to my award-winning podcast, Thoughts from a Page, which is a member of the Evergreen Podcasts Network. On the show, I chat with authors whose books I have enjoyed about their new releases, and I give you a peek behind the curtain of the publishing industry with my Behind the Scenes series. With so many books coming out weekly, it can be hard to decide what to read, so I find the best ones and share them with you. If you're looking for a community of readers, bonus content, and a chance to read books before they hit the shelves, I hope you'll consider joining my Patreon group, which is filled with a wonderful bunch of book lovers. The link to join is in the show notes. Do you love to be in the know about upcoming books? Kelly Hooker of At Kelly Hook Reads Books and I do too. We couldn't find a comprehensive list of titles all in one place, so we made one ourselves, and now we're sharing it with you. Our literary lookbook is a list of 182 books releasing from January to May 2024, curated for our communities. The link to buy it is in my show notes. Today, Mary Weber O'Malley and Pamela Klingerhorn return to chat with me about their favorite recommended reads of January through April of 2024. This is a huge publishing window with so many wonderful books coming out. I added a bunch to my list from their recommendations, and I hope you do too. Mary is the free-range virtual bookseller at large for Skylark Bookshop, an author liaison and scheduling producer for A Mighty Blaze. She is also a writer, grandmother, and chicken wrangler. She lives outside of Chicago with her husband and a menagerie of pets. Pamela has been a literary event planner since 2012. She enjoys attending and promoting literary events throughout the Twin Cities and beyond and has been nicknamed the local literary fairy godmother. She is currently the literary event coordinator at Valley Bookseller in Stillwater, Minnesota, and the creator and host of the monthly literary program, Literature Lovers Night Out. I hope you enjoy our conversation and add many books to your TBR. And now for a quick break. For the last year, I have been focusing more on my health and eating habits. In connection with that, I have started drinking AG1 in the morning. When I started drinking AG1 daily, I could feel a real difference in my health and energy levels. That is because AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. I recommend AG1 to all of my family and friends because the company has a team of doctors and scientists. It is tested for 950 contaminants and is NSF certified for sport. It is formulated based on the latest science and it maintains high quality standards. Thanks AG1 for sponsoring my show. AG1 is a supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash thoughts from a page. That's drinkag, the number one, dot com slash thoughts from a page. Check it out. And now back to my show. Welcome, Pamela and Mary. I'm thrilled that you're back, as always, to chat books with me. Thank you for having us, Cindy. It's always so much fun to talk with you and Mary about books. And I am so excited to be here. And I I don't know if I've been this excited about this many titles on any of these podcasts. And you know, I'm excited about books, but this forthcoming stack of books is really something special. I agree, Mary. This coming winter and spring of 2024 is just incredible. It was so hard to make a list that we could just talk about in an hour or so. Um, Yeah, people are really in for a good time this coming year. They really are. I have read a number already and just can't even imagine how many more are on my list. It's going to be a great time for books. Yes, indeed. And before we dive into that, Pamela, I just wanted to tell you that I had read The Berry Pickers from your recommendation from last episode, and it ended up being one of my favorite books of the year. I don't think I would have found it, but for you. I am so pleased to hear that. She has just been doing so well. I've seen her on many best of lists for the end of the year. And the Berry Pickers started out kind of quietly. And I'm glad to see the way it's taken off because it is such a brilliant novel that deserves so much recognition. So I'm really happy to hear that you enjoyed it as well. I did. So thank you. And I always get the best feedback on these episodes. I just want to make sure I tell you all that because every time so many people are like, thank you, thank you, thank you for having you all on. And just the recommendations you provide are different than you see elsewhere. And people really appreciate that. That's what we're shooting for. Right, Mary? Absolutely. So do either of you have anything coming up that you'd like to talk about? Well, Skylark Bookshop, it, as all the bookshops are right in the midst of their busy, busy season. And uh, you can get the best 
suggestions for gifts, not just books, but everything book related. Uh, but Skylark does something very special that if you have somebody in your world, whether it is a newborn baby in the family or your, you know, elderly Uncle Joe, you know you want to give books, but sometimes it's hard to know what book to choose. You can call Skylark. You can talk to one of the booksellers. You can get a one-month, three-month, six-month, 12-month book subscription for that person. Skylark will ask you about the person. They'll, you know, get some information from you. And then each month, they will hand choose the perfect book to send that person on your list. And you can arrange to have little add-ons done. They also have mystery boxes where if it's your mother, they will send a mystery box to mom with not only a perfect book, but some other little bookish add-on gifty items. They just make absolutely wonderful gifts. So I wanted to say for anybody who is stumped on what to get somebody and you want to get a very special gift for that person, the book subscription is a perfect way to go. Mary, that sounds fabulous. What a great idea. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Literature Lovers Night Out. We are on hiatus for the holiday season, but we return in February. So please stay tuned to the lit-lovers.com website to see the authors that will be appearing. And um, I will give you a few teasers during the course of the program, but we've got a lot of excitement. And for any of the authors that are coming or books that you would like to have in your collection, Valley Bookseller is happy to send out signed copies. And we can get those personalized for you or whatever you need, valleybookseller.com. In Stillwater, Minnesota, we can ship anywhere in the United States. You had a great lineup this fall, so I can't wait to hear what's coming this winter. We did indeed. Thank you. And Mary, I think those sound like wonderful gift ideas. That's such a nice way to recognize somebody who loves to read. Absolutely. Today, you guys are here to talk about best books of January through April of 2024. Do you guys want to get started? Let's do it. Yes. Well, I know Mary and I are both very excited about a big book that's coming out in February. Mary, do you want to give them a teaser? Absolutely. So Kristen Hanna fans are in for a huge treat. Kristen has taken her talents for historical fiction and brought us straight into the middle of the Vietnam War from a woman's perspective. And I cannot say enough about this book. I tore through it in record time. The fact that our soldiers coming back from this war were treated so poorly, but the women who were there were not even acknowledged. So Kristen, as she does, shines a spotlight on this part of history that I knew a portion of, but I certainly didn't know anything like the whole story. And she is bringing it to us with the women. It's a great character, and it's so nice to finally hear the story about the nurses of Vietnam from a woman's point of view, and it's been long overdue, and I'm so grateful to Kristen Hanna for writing The Women, and every bookseller that I know that's read an early copy is just raving about it, so I have absolutely no doubt that it will be soaring to the bestseller list the very week that it publishes. I have heard only fabulous, fabulous things about it, so I have bumped it up my list. Good choice. So let's dive into your lists now. Pamela, would you like to start today? I would love to. I'm going to give you a January release to begin. It is called The Storm We Made by Vanessa Chan. This one gets your attention from the very first provocative line. It's about one woman's decision in Malaysia during the war, World War II, that is, and how it impacts her family and the international community. This book is just phenomenal. I think a lot of us, like myself, don't know a lot about what happened in Malaysia. But in 1945, this particular character has placed her family in horrific danger. She decided that she was kind of desperate to be more than just a housewife. And she ends up meeting this very charismatic general. And he is Japanese. And he believes in Asia for Asians. And he lures her into this life of espionage. And she thinks she's helping, but what she's actually doing is ushering in a very brutal occupation by the Japanese. And 10 years later, as the war is reaching its peak, um, her actions have finally caught up with her. Her family 
is in terrible danger. Her son has disappeared. Her youngest daughter has to hide in the basement in order to avoid being taken as a comfort woman, as the Japanese did to so many women. And her other daughter is working in a tea house um, that's frequented by Japanese soldiers. And it's a very scary time. And the main character, Cecily, she knows that this is her fault. And she also knows that if her family learns the truth, that she will be cast out. This is horrible. Um, It is so spellbinding. And it's, you know, just this incredible book about the relationship between the colonized and their oppressors, about the morality of right and wrong during a time of war when your survival's at stake. And Vanessa Chan just does a spectacular job of bringing these characters to life on the page. So it's called The Storm We Made. Put it on your Christmas list. I could not agree more. Just hearing you talk about that, Pamela, brought me back into the setting of the book. It's such a visual book. It elicits so many emotions. I loved it. And it's on the January Indie Next list. And Pamela, you wrote the blurb, right? I don't know if I wrote the blurb on the Indie Next list, but I know that they used both my blurb and Mary's blurb in some of the promotional materials. Okay, got it. I saw you post about it. So I think I just made some assumptions, but it is on the Indie Next list, right? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Well, I definitely need to get to that one as well. Yes, make that one a top priority. I will. I I know I'm going to say that for like most of the books y'all are talking about. Exactly. I'm going to have 20 (laughs) top priorities. (laughs) All right, Mary, what's up first for you? Okay, my first book is just a, it knocked me sideways. It is Martyr by Kave Akbar. And oh my God, I love this book so much. Uh, Do not be thrown by the cover. Not a fan of this cover. It works with the book, but I would not have picked it up for the cover alone. However, when I did pick it up and I noticed the blurbs on the back, blurbs from Tommy Orange, Leslie Jameson, Lauren Groff, John Green, Clint Smith, and Mary Carr, all authors that I love so much, I moved this right to the top of my TBR. This author is first and foremost a poet, a published poet, and he writes like one. Uh, If you want a book where the language is front and center, this is it. The language is just, it, it spoke to my soul. It is absolutely beautiful, but the story is also magnificent. It's about a young Iranian man who is a drunk, an addict, and a poet. A little bit autobiographical there. After being orphaned, he becomes obsessed with martyrs. His obsession leads him to a terminally ill woman who is spending her final days as a living art exhibit at a New York museum. I was blown away by everything this book has to offer. It is easily one of my top three books of next year. Everything about it is just magnificent. And I hope that people just race to pick this up. When Mary and I were at a bookseller convention this fall, Mary stood by the pile of books and was collaring booksellers as they walked past saying, have you read Martyr? If not, you have to take a copy. You must read this book. (laughs) So if she is the number one evangelist for Martyr, that's for sure. I remember when you posted about it a while ago and how much you liked it. It's, It's truly something special. I love that too. I can see you standing there by the book stack and saying, okay, do not leave until you've taken a copy. Well, my second book also comes out in January, and that is True North by Andrew Graff. This is his second novel. He wrote Raft of Stars about a couple young boys on a river a little while back that I was a huge fan of reading. And this one, again, comes into play in Wisconsin. Great characters. Readers are going to have a hard time deciding whether this story about whitewater rafting or the host of troubles facing the Brecht family is the more difficult. This one has really immersive prose, empathetic characters, and lots of action. The whitewater rafting scenes are really spectacular. Andrew Graff himself is a whitewater rafter, so he knows about what he's writing about. And this one is amazing. It's back in 1993, this young couple, they're kind of down on their luck, hard up for cash. They take their kids and get into a camper van and drive to Wisconsin to the whitewater rafting camp that the husband's uncle owns. It has seen better times, and it is now being competed with for customers with a very fancy high-tech whitewater rafting company. And then we also have a nice plot line coming in about an exploratory mining company 
that kind of threatens the area and everybody's livelihood and the river itself. So before the summer comes to an end, the Brecht family has to learn how to face both the floodwaters, their competition, and the own struggles within their family in order to make this work. And I love the wife, Swami. She's a really strong character. She gets her kind of lackluster husband booted in the rear and gets moving. And I love the power and the force that was behind this character. And I'm especially excited because Andrew Graff will be coming to Minnesota to participate in Literature Lovers Night Out on both February 3rd and 4th. But it's actually going to be Literature Lovers Afternoon Out as we're doing weekend matinees for that program. And if you check the website, lit-lovers.com, those tickets will be up for sale soon and you will be able to register and see him in person. I have heard great things about that one and it is already at the top of my list and I will keep it there. It also makes a great gift book for men. Absolutely. It makes a perfect gift book for men. And Andrew just, he writes families uh, so well. He writes those dynamics so well. And he's just, he's such a lovely person. And that somehow comes through in his writing. It really does. (laughs) And while you're waiting, be sure and pick up a copy of Raft of Stars because that's a phenomenal, wonderful book. And I somehow missed that one, but I remember people raving about it. Very much worth your time. I found Raft of Stars to be a great intergenerational read. I feel like, you know, multiple grandparents, parents, kids could read that book and discuss it. Oh, I agree because it has characters representing all those different age groups as well. Absolutely. Well, my next book is also another January release. And this one is also an Indie Next pick. And I am proud to say that my blurb is being used for Indie Next on... You Only Call When You're in Trouble by Stephen McCauley. This is about a man named Tom who has spent his lifetime looking out for his sister and her only daughter, his niece, his one and only niece. Tom's boyfriend moves out, reminding Tom that his first love has always been and will always be his niece, and he's tired of of playing second fiddle to that. Tom is constantly jumping in to save his sister and her daughter from one catastrophe or another. And when his phone rings, he does what he's always done and answers the call. This book is filled with messy family ties and drama. Uh, They are at the forefront of this funny, complex, and beautifully written novel. I loved the dialogue in it. I loved it's got a a fair amount of snark, which I, I seem to be drawn to. And it's just, it's a really, really well done book. So I'm super excited about You Only Call When You're in Trouble. And it's kind of a really uh, funky, eye-catching cover. I enjoyed that one as well. And and also enjoyed Stephen's earlier novel, My Ex-Life. It was, um, again, wonderful characters. Great interplay between the men and women. That one sounds entertaining. And Mary, congratulations on having the blurb for the Indie Next pick. Thank you. Well done, Mary. <laughs> All right. My next book takes us into February, and it is called The Still Point by Tammy Greenwood. I said that this one is sort of a combo of Big Little Lies meets The Turning Point. I don't know if you remember that old movie with Mikhail Baryshnikov and Gelsey Kirkland about the ballet world. Um, The publisher is saying a more updated version of Dance Moms meets Little Fires Everywhere. But this one Uh, The still point, Tammy Greenwood takes us inside the elite world of rising ballerinas. It's a really rigorous and competitive existence, and that is just for the mothers. (laughs) The girls themselves have their own conflicts. The moms in this book, they have ushered their daughters through zillions of dance classes, tended their bloody feet, stitched ribbons, done all kinds of work in the background. And now it has come to the Piaz de Resistance. Etienne Bernay, this man from the French Ballet, he has come to the Dance Conservatory and he will not only direct the Nutcracker, he brought along a film crew who is going to help him select a scholarship to the Ballet de Paris. And the girls have a chance to fulfill a lifelong dream. Needless to say, this becomes an absolutely cutthroat competition between both the girls and their mothers. This story transports you to this cutthroat world of competitive dance, and it is so brilliantly done. Tammy's daughter is a professional ballerina, so she knows the world that she's writing about. 
And I just know that readers are going to fall in love with this book. It was such a wonderful escape of story to take me back to my dancing days when I was a child. And it arrives in February at the still point from Tammy Greenwood. I adored this book as well. It brought out so many emotions and felt like you were in the pages of a Dance Moms reality show. Uh, She did it so well, but there were so many little subplots going on. Oh my gosh, it it was so good. Definitely. All that um, backbiting and subterfuge. That one sounds very intriguing. And I think people really love books about the ballet world. I agree. They do. Well, my next book is another January release. It is Mercury by Amy Jo Burns. And this, uh, it's 1990 and 17-year-old Marley West is blazing into the River Valley town of Mercury, Pennsylvania. She's with her mom, but she's a perpetual loner. She's seeking a place to call her own. Her, she and her mom travel from place to place. You know, her mom gets a job. She Marley switches schools regularly. She's, you know, your typical loner, move from town to town, don't have time for friends, but she is always looking for a place to call her own. She's looking for a family to call her own. And the first thing she sees upon entering the town of Mercury is a group of men standing on a rooftop. The Joseph brothers become her whole world. And before she can blink, she is a young wife to one, the one who got away to another, an adopted mother to them all. Fans of We Are the Brennans or any of those, you know, family saga drama books will absolutely love Mercury. It is one of those books that the longer I've gotten away from having read it, the more I find myself, you know, thinking back to it and thinking back to certain scenes and relationships. And it is a fabulous book club book because there is so, so much to discuss in here. And that is Mercury by Amy Jo Burns. I really enjoyed that one as well. I'm so glad it was on your list. Characters were very compelling. I really felt a deep emotional connection to several of them. I've heard such great things and it is definitely up for me very soon. And the cover is stunning. It really is. It's a beautiful cover. Well, I'm already hopping forward into March now. Kao Kalia Yang is a Minnesota author. Um, She is one of the few Hmong writers in the United States. And readers may remember her earlier work, The Late Homecomer. It came out um, from Coffee House Press here in Minnesota. And it went on to sell thousands upon thousands of copies. It won a Minnesota Book Award. It was a Penn USA Award nonfiction finalist. And then her second book, The Song Poet, which was about her father, also won a Minnesota Book Award. And it became a opera just this past summer. They performed it here in Minnesota. She now returns with her mother's story. This is called Where Rivers Part. And she uses her poetic prose to share the story of her mother's harrowing life in Laos and then her eventual emigration to the United States. Readers know that Kalia writes an emotionally gripping and beautiful tale, and Where Rivers Part delivers on every front. Uh, What's particularly moving about this book is it's her mother's story, but Kalia writes it in first-person narrative, so it's very immediate feel to it. Um, It's a tribute to her mother's resilience and to her love, and it is a truly stellar achievement. Not many people know much about the Laos secret war. It's kind of an undocumented piece of history. And Kao Kalia Yang brings this to the forefront, shines a light on the atrocities that were done to the Hmong Laotians. And so this book offers a ton of thought-provoking subject material for book clubs. It's going to be an amazing mother-daughter read, and it's a moving tale of survival. And she just does such a beautiful job. I hosted her in the past. And after she got done speaking and people in the audience are weeping at the beauty of her words, the author who had to follow her got up and as he passed me, he said, thanks for putting me after Gandhi. (laughs) She's just such a beautiful speaker. She has a gorgeous voice and 
her words are just like poetry and it's it was wonderful and so i'm so honored and thrilled to be hosting the release for where rivers part on march 19th at the parkway theater in minneapolis and tickets will be up on the website soon so everyone in minnesota can look forward to that and it's an event that's well worth flying into the state for i believe that sounds incredible I just got a copy of that one. It arrived literally like three days ago, and I can't wait to read it. The publicist that she has always gets the very best books. And so anytime she recommends anything, I say absolutely. And the cover is also stunning on that one. I was just going to comment on the cover. It's definitely very eye-catching. If I knew nothing about it, I would pick it up just to look at it. I agree. Fantastic. I am going to add that one to my TBR. I uh, love when we can share something. I, I That one was not even on my radar. So uh, I love it that Pamela and I can can share those types of books with each other. I have yet another January tale. And uh, I don't know if it's because the holidays are filled with family drama that the books I'm talking about, so many of them are full of that as well. But my next book is By the Queen of Family. Tales, and that is Family Family by Lori Frankel. I adore Lori Frankel's writing. I find her dialogue to be incredibly witty, sharp. Uh, I find myself snort laughing as I read her books, but also I find my heart, you know, just kind of split wide open. And that is the case with Family Family. Uh, this time it's from the perspective of adoption but adoption from every angle, those who place children for adoption, those who adopt those children, and the children who are themselves adopted. All of this is surrounded by Lori Frankel's wit and sparkling dialogue. She's just the queen of writing about contemporary families. And I certainly fell in love with this one, which is headed by India Allwood, who grew up wanting to be an actress Armed with a lot of talent, she goes from awkward 16-year-old to Broadway to TV star. But while promoting her most recent project, she actually is very honest in an interview and says that it's a bad movie, that she doesn't like it, that they're using adoption tropes and it's not what adoption is really like. It makes it into a tragic situation, and India has two adoptive children and knows there's so much more to that story than tragedy. Soon she's at the center of a media storm. She's battling, you know, it, cancel culture from every angle, accusations from the press and paparazzis, protesters on the right, advocates on the left, and her daughter knows they need help. And who better to help than family? So, uh, and it ends with, the, the blurb on the back ends with, because India is not just an adoptive mom. This book is just, it's, it's filled with everything. It fills my heart. Just talking about it makes me smile because Lori's writing is just so special. And uh, she really writes from the, the inside of these situations. She really does. Her last novel, One, Two, Three, also focused on a family with triplets. And it was just beautiful. And this one, I was like you, I just sat down and tore through family, family. Love these characters. Mary and I had a chance to meet Lori Frankel a couple summers ago. She was absolutely delightful. She does know what she's talking about. She's adoptive mother herself. And um, yeah, this is going to be, I think, a big one with book clubs. I loved it as well. I thought it was just so well done. I tore through it and I'm interviewing her tomorrow, which will run in January. So I'm really excited. That is exciting. I can't wait to listen. Great. Well, I'm popping right along here. My next one is The Husbands, which comes out in April by Holly Gramazio. She's an Australian author now uh, based in London. And this one is a really big buzz book. It was won by Penguin Random House in a 10-way auction. And it has already been purchased as a limited TV series. And I would not be surprised at all if one of the celebrity book clubs on TV picked it up. Think of things like Bonnie Garmus, Gabrielle Zevin, Aaron Morgenstern. This is The Husbands. This one is sort of a time-bending, time-travel book without the time travel. Our main character, Lauren, returns home from her to her flat one night in London, and she's greeted at the door by her husband, which wouldn't be exceptional, except that she's not married. She's never seen this man in her before in her life. 
But according to her friends and her home and everything, she looks around, he really is her husband. She's very confused. And as she tries to puzzle out how she can be possibly married to someone she doesn't even know, Michael goes up to the attic to get something and he disappears. And in his place, a new man emerges. And Lauren comes to find out that every time she sends one of the husbands up to the attic, a new one comes down. <laughs> and so she is then faced with, you know, how do you find the partner that's right for you and is good enough? Okay, what do you take? And if you, you know, I've ever thought about trading in your partner once in a while, <laughs> this book will make you laugh. It's funny, it's thought provoking. And the scenes where she sends these husbands up to the attic one after another in hopes of perfection are just very clever and witty. And if you're looking for a highly inventive read with a really relatable character and well-crafted prose, The Husbands by Holly Gramazio is definitely a keeper. It was so much fun. I was in the mood for a fun novel and I'm so thrilled about this. And I think it's going to be one of the big, big books for next spring. I, this was one Pamela and I had to arm wrestle over who was going to talk about it because we both love it so much. And I have to say when I, you know, when the first husband shows up, I thought, okay, this story's kind of been done. No. Oh my word. The amount of cleverness and humor. And yes, I, I absolutely adore this book. You know, with all the different characters and husbands, it's amazing. I kept you know, waiting to find something where, you know, it didn't transpire because some of them make more than one appearance in her life, not necessarily as her husband again. And it was just so well crafted and intricate and entertaining. It, it is going to be a big deal come April. I think that's exactly right. I loved it. And I've been shouting it from the rooftops already. I think it's just going to be such a great book that people are going to love. And it's so much fun. And like Mary said, when I first started, I thought, okay, is it going to get a little old, new husband, new husband? But she takes it in so many really clever and thought-provoking directions. And I love that some of the husbands show up in other realms of her life as well. I just thought it was very well thought through and such a clever read. It really is. That's going to be a lot of fun in April. Definitely. What have you got next, Mary? One more January title. January is just, I'm telling you, you can... Pray for snow and cold because you aren't going to want to leave the house. Uh, you're just going to want to stay in and read these books. My next title is The Mysterious Case of the Alberton Angels. And I will be honest in saying that when I first started reading this, I struggled to get myself immersed in the style of writing because this is all completely written through emails, WhatsApp messages, texts, and interview transcripts. But once I fell into it, you know, maybe 20 pages in, it did not let me go. And I tore through it. It is one of those potato chip reads, uh, especially because of the way it's written in these short little bursts. It's, you know, just one more page, just one more chapter, just one more email, one more text. And before I knew it, I, I was just about through. This is a true crime mystery novel that takes some incredible twists and turns. It's perfect winter reading. And I found myself having to remind myself that this was fiction. You know, there, a couple of times I picked up my phone to look up the actual case, forgetting for a moment that this was made up. This is, you know, everyone knows the story of the Elberton Angels the cult who brainwashed a teenage girl into believing her baby was the Antichrist. When the girl came to her senses and called the police, the angels committed a mass suicide and the mother and baby disappeared. Now there's a true crime author that is looking to revive her career by writing a book about the case. The Elperton baby has now turned 18, and if she can find the mother and child, this will be the scoop of her career and catapult her into fame. Just a really good, twisty, turny, mystery novel. I loved it. I bumped it up higher on my list after Mary was raving about it so much. And I agree. I was really enthralled with this story. It was so compelling. <laughs> and Dying to know not only if she would solve the original mystery of the Albert and Angels, but also what was going to happen to her as she herself gets pulled into this web of deceit. I love unique formats. When they're told that way, that's always a lot of fun, I think. 
Yeah, I wasn't sure, like Mary, when I first opened it up, I was like, oh, is this going to be gimmicky? But it really works. That, that's the way this story needed to be told. All right. Well, I am in April. If Mary has a lot of January ones, April apparently is my month. Uh, my next recommendation is The Flower Sisters by Michelle Collins Anderson. And Mary and I had the pleasure of meeting her this fall and really getting the lowdown on this story. The Flower Sisters is inspired by a true story about the Bond Dance Hall explosion that took place back in 1928 in West Plains, Missouri. This is the author's hometown, and apparently this explosion and fire was never really solved about what happened. So that was perfect food for starting this story and extrapolating on it with a fictional group of characters and circumstances. I wish my grandmother was still alive because I used to share Fanny Flagg novels with her all the time. And this is a Fanny Flagg type novel that I know my grandmother would have loved, but so will younger readers, of course. The Flower Sisters explores themes of identity and forgiveness and redemption as these town's residents share their memories of this horrific tragedy. It toggles back and forth in time between 1928 and in the 70s when a young girl comes to town and starts working in the local newspaper and comes across this story and the anniversary and wants to start looking into it. And some of the townspeople say, no, it just brings up too many bad memories. But some of them do share their stories with her. And she finds out a lot about the town and a lot about her own family. This is a great book for book clubs. The author provides a ton of information about the real events and her inspiration in the back of the book. It's got wonderful female characters, multiple points of view, and lots of really provocative themes that will supply your book club with good discussion material. You know, how a split second decision affects the lives of not only the perpetrator, but the people that it impacts about small town tragedies and how they reverberate through the years. And the Flower Sisters was just a beautiful read. I know Mary and I were both fans. Absolutely, we were. And the Fanny Flagg reference is spot on. Her writing is just, she brings you into the time and place and you you just feel like you're being carried along by her words. It's a, a beautiful book. And I agree, so much to discuss and uh, would make a great book club book. I've not even heard of this one. So I'm thrilled to pieces that you mentioned it and you both love it. I'm going to add it to my list. Yes, contact Kensington and get a copy of that one right away. I plan to as soon as we hang up. Fabulous. Well, I'm finally moving into February. I have one February title and it is a memoir. It's Splinters by Leslie Jameson. I've been a huge fan of Leslie Jameson's writing for many years now. And when I saw this memoir coming out, I snapped it up. If you are a fan of Maggie Smith and especially her book, You Could Make This Place Beautiful, then you will want to get yourself a copy of Splinters. This is a heartfelt, almost her her writing for me has almost a haunted quality to it. It is a memoir of her journey through new motherhood and her subsequent divorce from her husband. You know, they happen very close together when this this child is just a small baby. Her memoir, her writing is hypnotic. The way she writes things, it's just, it's darkly beautiful. And you feel like you are sitting in a dark room with her, you know, maybe the baby's in the next room and you're you're speaking quietly. And she's just burying her soul. And she does that in such a way that she invites you in to the story. It's it's very raw, very honest, and just a, a beautiful memoir. I haven't had a chance to read Leslie's new one, but I've enjoyed her past work. I just looked that one up because I wasn't familiar with it either. And it's a very intriguing cover. All right. I'm going to take us into April once again um, with New York Times bestselling author Caroline Levitt. And her new book is called Days of Wonder. I really think Caroline is at the top of her game in Days of Wonder. She has crafted a cast of characters that are going to have readers spellbound. There's childhood disasters, adult transgressions, and the complications of family. And she weaves them together to create this incredible novel of redemption, reinvention, and most of all, hope. It's 
rare that I read a novel that affects me so dramatically that I feel that the characters are people with whom I have a personal investment. But Days of Wonder and Caroline Levitt did that. She has this mother-daughter story, um, themes of guilt and innocence, and the lengths that we will go to for love. Ella Fitchberg is her main character, and she falls madly in love with a young man, and she finds her life unexpectedly upended when she is accused of murdering this young man's father, who is a superior court judge. She has no recollection of the events leading up to this murder. Um, she's sentenced to 25 years in prison, and then she finds that she is pregnant. Um, knowing that she can't raise this child, she decides to give it up for adoption. Through circumstances, she gets out after serving only part of the sentence, and she's desperate to find this child and see what has happened to her. It is so riveting and compelling. And as I said, you just are emotionally invested in Ella and what's going to happen to her, what's going to happen to this child, and what actually transpired on the night of the judge's murder. It's a really gripping, high drama page turner with beautiful writing. And I think that this is going to get Caroline Levitt back on the bestseller list. What are your thoughts, Mary? I loved this book. Pamela and I, neither one of us likes to read electronically. I'm on a screen way too often. When I'm reading a book, I want a physical book in my hand. But Caroline asked me to read this digitally. And so I did. And I found myself, oh my gosh, I, I couldn't tear myself away from these pages. It was so well written, just beautiful. And it's one of those books that you you just find yourself thinking about for ages afterwards. And Side note, unrelated, I can't seem to get them to send me an actual physical galley. So if, Pamela, <laughs> if you have a contact, please send it my way because I'm dying to get my hands on a physical copy. Yes, I will definitely send you my contact at Algonquin. <laughs> that sounds fascinating. I'm going to have to get a hold of that one, though it sounds like I may have to read it digitally if it's really hard to get a hold of a physical copy. This We both read early copies, so I'm guessing that by now they probably have print galleys out. Okay, good. Don't you know that you're a grown-up? I'm a grown-up. Me too. Yep, me too. But you know, these days, being a grown-up can really suck. Luckily, we're grown-ups who grew up in the coolest generation. We had video arcades. And also some of the best TV and movies ever made. We lived the origin of awesome consumer electronics. The list goes on and on. Yep, Generation X. Exactly. And we're Gen X Grown-Up. Every week, the Gen X Grown-Up podcast explores media, tech, toys, games, and more from both yesterday and today. Through the eyes of Generation Xers who absolutely love that stuff. You can find us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Or find us on our website, genxgrownup.com. All right, I think that was good enough. I, I hope so, man. I'm tired. <laughs> Who listens to a promo on a podcast and then goes and listens to a different podcast? Right. I, I, I've never done it. Right. <laughs> Okay, so my next book is a completely unique. It's also a March. I'm, I've moved into March. <laughs> this is a just such a unique and wonderful and special novel. It is Bunyan and Henry, or comma, The Beautiful Destiny. That is the actual title, Bunyan and Hen Henry, or The Beautiful Destiny. And it is by Mark Cecil. And this story started out as a bedtime story that Mark would tell his children each night, kind of, ex you know, expanding on it as the nights went on and it became this novel. This is the type of novel, as I was reading it, it brought me back to when I was a, a child myself, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old. And I was devouring books that had a quest, a journey a hero's journey, you know, all of these things that I loved as a child. This book brought me right back there. And it is uh, Paul Bunyan reimagined. It is a hero's journey. It's a tale of an epic friendship and a mythological wonder. Paul Bunyan, legendary, larger than life, American lumberjack, is a man down on his luck. With a load of family debts on his broad back, he ekes out a miserable miner's life in Lumptown. 
a bleak hamlet controlled by the famed industrialist El Bafo, when Bunyan's wife, Lucette, falls ill with the disease caused by the mysterious mineral lump, he embarks on a quest to save her. His only guide is the Chilali, a creature who speaks solely in questions. So that gives you an idea of what you're in for in this book. Uh, I feel like this is a book that men would enjoy reading. Uh, you know, again, it, it could be an intergenerational buddy read. It just took me to a lot of places that I haven't been taken to in in a while with the book. So I enjoyed this so much. And Mark is one of the hosts on the Mighty Blaze show, correct? Thank you for pointing that out, Pamela. Yes, he is. He hosts the segment called Thoughtful Bro. And he his interviews are just absolutely amazing. And he he is thoughtful. He is so thoughtful with the types of questions he asks in the books that he pulls to read and the authors he chooses to interview. Uh, and all of that comes through and in this debut novel, Bunyan and Henry. Yeah, I hope people will take a look at his interviews while they're waiting for the book to arrive because he really does a magnificent job. I'll have to listen to him. And that sounds like a very inventive book. I know it'll do well in Minnesota. We love our Paul Bunyan stories up here. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's got some uh, some settings in Chicago and I think St. Louis in there too. So he'll be doing a lot of Midwest book visits and I'm excited to to have him out this way. Very fun. Well, my next book is by a Welsh author, but it takes place in Scotland. It's called Clear by Karis Davies. And Clear absolutely demands your attention. It's got concise prose, uh, masterfully crafted characters, and it's a profound meditation on loneliness and human connection. Karis Davies is a genius at producing fiction in the UK. Um, her past novels have done very well. West, I know, was a huge bestseller. So this one is great for book clubs, and it is has the markings of a modern masterpiece. It's about the clearances that took place in the 18 or 19th century, 1800s um, in Scotland, and the islands that are in the remote territories off the Scottish coast were being cleared of their last remaining inhabitants. These are people who had made their lives there. And despite the fact that it was a very grueling existence, and they did not want to leave. This was their home. This was where they were from. And it was not their choice. So this novel, Clear, takes place in the 1840s in the final stages of the clearances. Whole communities were taken off the land. In this particular instance, there's one remaining settler on this island, and a former minister is down on his luck, needs cash, so he agrees to go and be dropped off on this island and try and form a relationship with this man who speaks sort of an archaic dialect in Scots English, and he is supposed to get this man to move off the island. However, when he arrives, it's a very brutal landscape, and he has a serious accident. And it is the last remaining survivor who finds him and saves his life. The two men forge a bond, despite the fact that they have no language between them. They form a friendship, and they form an understanding. And all of this is turned on its head when the minister's wife finally arrives because she is concerned about him and why he has not returned. So Clear uh, comes out in April. It's a short novel. It packs a powerful punch. And I think it's one that book clubs will like. I know they don't always want to sit down to an 800-page book. So this one comes in around 250. And it has so much to discuss packed into these very concise chapters and really hard-hitting plots and themes. And again, um, profound characters. So Clear by Karis Davies. Mark your calendar for April. I just read that this weekend and it had been kind of staring at me and I kept picking it up, putting it down, picking it up, putting it down. And yeah, it, it is a really quick read, but I don't know how I got through it that fast because the story, there's so, so much to discuss. 
so much to take in, isn't there? <laughs> there is. And to discuss in those, you know, con- like you said, concise chapters, phenomenal book club read because you want to talk about it with somebody. Exactly. I've seen information about this one. I don't have a copy yet. You're reminding me I need to get one, but it sounds phenomenal. And the cover is another one that's really a standout. Yes, very dramatic picture on the cover. All right, so I have another March book, and this is another very unique novel that took me by surprise on a lot of levels. It is Say Hello to My Little Friend by Janine Capo Crusette. This is a completely unique and wonderful book about a young man's attempt to capitalize on his mother's murky legacy. Failed pitbull impersonator Ishmael Rise, you can call him Izzy, might not be the Scarface type, but why should that keep him from trying to get the money and the power? Growing up in Miami after fleeing Cuba has shaped him into someone who dreams of being the king of the 305. After finding himself at the mercy of a cease and desist letter from Pitbull's legal team, and living in his aunt's garage, Izzy embarks on an absurd quest to turn himself into a modern-day Tony Montana. When his efforts lead him to the tank that houses Lolita, a captive orca at the Miami Seaquarium, she proves just how powerful she and all the water around her really are. As the truth surrounding Izzy's boyhood escape from Cuba surfaces, the novel reckons with the forces of nature the limits and absence of love, and the dangers of pursuing a tragic inheritance. This book surprised me in a million different ways. It has shades of remarkably bright creature, and as much as Lolita, this orca, you have alternating chapters between Izzy and this quest to make a name for himself. And Lolita, this orca that was stolen from her family when she was, you know, very young and has been forced to spend decades swimming in circles in this tank, you know, having to perform for crowds. The way these two stories come together is burned into my brain and I will never, ever, ever forget it (laughs) from Now until forever, when I hear that term, say hello to my little friend, I will think of Lolita and Izzy. Wow, I'm almost scared of that because it's so heartbreaking to think of these mammals being separated from their families and the emotions that we know now that they endure at this horrible experience. I loved her other book, Make Your Home Among Strangers. And I hadn't read that. This was my first introduction to her. Yeah, it's it's unforgettable. Sounds like it. The title just cracks me up. Say hello to my little friend. You know, so <laughs> I just always think that every time I read it. But it is definitely on my list. Excellent. Well, I'm still in April here with my last book, which is Darling Girls from the master of Australian mystery, Sally Epworth. And I am so excited for this one. Mary and I were huge, huge fans of a novel she brought out a few years ago called The Good Sister from St. Martin's Press. And Sally returns now with Darling Girls, and it is absolutely on fire. This is the book you've been waiting for. Strong characters, a ripping good plot, and lots of secret revelations. I cannot begin to express how excited I was about reading this book. I was in Europe, and yet I still kept sneaking away because I had to finish this book within 24 hours because I had to know what happened. This one takes three sisters. They're not biological sisters. They came to be sisters through the foster care system. And Alicia, Jessica, and Nora, they might seem like normal women, but they were raised in very dire circumstances with their foster mother, Miss Fairchild. She could be unpredictable. One moment, she could be your loving, adoring mother, and the next you find out you should not cross Miss Fairchild. The girls are now long out of her reach as adults. However, their past haunts them. And it comes back, roaring into their faces again when bones are discovered under their childhood home. And they are all brought in to find out who these bones belong to and what exactly happened in that house when they were children. I am 
thrilled to say that Sally Hepworth is going to be doing a U.S. tour with this book and that I will be hosting her with the Literature Lovers Night Out program on Saturday, April 27th. We'll be in Minneapolis. And once again, links will be coming soon. But that I know is going to be a sold out event. And Sally, to the best of my knowledge, has not been in Minnesota before. She has many, many fans here. Um, She's a prolific author. She's a huge Instagram influencer. And I am just so thrilled that we are finally going to have an opportunity to meet face to face. And I get to hear the inside scoop on Darling Girls coming from St. Martin's Press in April. This is going to be a big, big book for spring. That is a huge coup for you, Pamela. I'm so oh. thrilled that you got her. I hope it means you're flying up. <laughs> oh, I I would love to be able to do that. I'll be gone like the whole week before, but I'm going to have to see if I can just come overnight. <laughs> I loved that book too. It's haunting. Oh my gosh. She she writes that story to where you are you're being dragged through the pages along with those those girls it was so good it was could not put it down that is very exciting pamela congratulations and i have never read her i follow her on instagram and i really enjoy her role there and the things she posts about in fact her last trip to the us was a hoot watching how all of that unfolded but i need to read this one it sounds like yeah, well, get the good sister while you're waiting for your arc to arrive of Darling Girls, because um, Mary and I were rabid fans for that one as well. OK, we will do. Yeah, but she has a, a lot of great reading that keep you busy till April when the new one comes out. Perfect, because I don't already have a bunch of books to read. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, my final book is an April release, and this is a uh, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue Meets Life of Pi in this incredible, dazzling debut. It is A Short Walk Through a Wide World by Douglas Westerbeek. This is another very unique novel. Not really time hop, but it bends reality a little bit. And I've never read anything like it. I I could not stop reading about Aubrey Torville. Starts out in Paris, 1885, She's a spoiled and stubborn nine-year-old girl who comes across a wooden puzzle ball on her walk home from school. She tosses it over the fence, only to find it in her backpack that evening. Days later, at the family dinner table, she starts to bleed to death. When medical treatment only makes her worse, she flees to the outskirts of the city, where she realizes it's the very active movement that keeps her alive. So begins her lifelong journey on the run from her condition, which will not allow her to stay anywhere for longer than a few days or to return to a place where she's already been. I I found this so dazzlingly unique and the world traveling that, uh, that Aubrey does, the people she meets on her journey, and now and then she, she finds herself in kind of a wormhole library Books are are the center point in this novel. There's just so much. It's it's very visual. I could picture this being, it, it would take a special person to bring this to a screen, but it had that kind of presence as I was reading it, where it's just begging to be made into an epic limited series or movie. I enjoyed it so much. It's uh, coming in April, Douglas Westerbeek, a short walk through a wide world. Another wonderful book club pick as well. Now, thanks to your enthusiasm, it's sitting on my nightstand and I'm hoping to get to it very quickly. You will love it. I know that based on your recommendation. (laughs) (laughs) I remember when you posted about it and I added it to my list. Pamela, do you have a couple shout outs you want to do? Yes, since we put our list together and there were just, you know, so many great books coming out. I couldn't squeeze them all in. And I've also read a couple more since we finalized things. Um, I wanted to give a couple shout outs to a few more titles. Chris Kander has a new book coming out in February called The Young of Other Animals. You may remember her from a beautiful novel from Knopf called The Weight of a Piano that came out a few years ago. Um, she returns in February with The Young of Other Animals. A uh, really fun one coming from Britain called The Fellowship of Puzzle Makers by Samuel Burr. This is about a baby left on a doorstep 
at a home where a group of puzzle makers live. It was absolutely charming. Um, loved the characters and loved the concept of the story. And who doesn't love a story that starts out with a baby in a basket dropped off on a porch? And last but not least, um, our own Minnesota author, Leif Enger, returns with I Cheerfully Refuse. Um, he had a huge best-selling novel, Peace Like a River. He's had a few others in the meantime, most recently Virgil Wander. And now he's back with I Cheerfully Refuse, um, set in the not-too-distant future, a man traveling around the Great Lakes on a Gulliver-type exploration. And I absolutely tore through it this past weekend, and I am excited to uh, see Leif Inger return with a brand new book, and I know his many fans will be too. I'm so excited for that one. It is definitely on my list, and I've been hearing wonderful things. And Chris Kander lives really close to me. I'm excited for her book as well. Oh, does she? Yeah. Yes, I'm a big Chris Kander fan. Yeah, she's great. Well, thank you all both so much. As always, I say my list has doubled now because I have so many new books to add to it. And I'm happy to hear that you've loved some of the same ones that I've read as well. So as always, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having us again. I just I get so excited revisiting these titles that I've maybe, you know, read some time ago and realizing that their pub dates are coming closer. And now I can get everybody else excited for them as well. Yes, it's always so much fun to get together with you too, even if we have to do it virtually. One day we're going to get all three of us in the same room and, and have a real live book conversation. In the meantime, I'm so glad for this opportunity. Thank you again for inviting us back to the podcast. Absolutely. Hear Her Sports is a podcast for everyone who loves stories by and about women striving to improve and make a difference in their lives. I am your host, Elizabeth Emery, a former professional cyclist. In every episode, I introduce a female athlete or woman in the business of sport through a thoughtful conversation about who they are and the terrific work they're doing. My guests and I explore the glorious and frustrating issues in sports, history, equity, training, nutrition, and so much more. Join us for inspiration, for community, and for love of being a strong athletic woman. Hi there, I'm Heather Drago. And I'm Sarah Saunders. We host the podcast, That's a Hard No, about saying no and setting boundaries. So you can become that true and empowered you that this world needs. Saying no isn't just okay. It's the key to living an authentic, fulfilling life. I'm a licensed professional clinical counselor. So while this podcast is in no way a replacement for one-on-one -on -one therapy, I suppose I know what I'm talking about. I'd say so. We talk about learning to say no and set healthy boundaries and how it impacts mental health, physical health, relationships, parenthood, and more. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and visit our website, hardknowpodcast.com. We're here to help you find your no and say it unapologetically. That's a hard no. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. I would love to connect with you on Instagram or Facebook, where you can find me at Thoughts from a Page. If you enjoy the show, please consider joining my Patreon group to access bonus content and support the podcast. If you have a moment to rate the show or subscribe to it wherever you listen to your podcasts, I would really appreciate it. It makes a big difference. And please tell all of your friends about Thoughts from a Page. Word of mouth does wonders to help the show grow. I hope you'll tune in next time. I'm a grown-up. Me too. Yep, me too. But you know, these days, being a grown-up can really suck. Luckily, we're grown-ups who grew up in the coolest generation. We had video arcades. And also some of the best TV and movies ever made. We lived the origin of awesome consumer electronics. The list goes on and on. Yep, Generation X. Exactly. And we're Gen X Grown-Up. Every week, the Gen X Grown-Up podcast explores media, tech, toys, games, and more from both yesterday and today. Through the eyes of Generation Xers who absolutely love that stuff. You can find us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Or find us on our website, genxgrownup.com. Alright, you think that was good enough? I, I hope so, man. I'm tired. <laughs> who listens to a promo on a podcast and then goes and listens to a different podcast? Right. I, I, I've never done it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right.